Hi, um, I don't actually have a class in front of me, so you will hear me pause for responses um, where they would give me feedback. And so it might not be quite 30 minutes. Um, if there is an actual class, we would have interaction and it would definitely go that long. Okay, my name is Miss Rogers. I'm here to teach on grief and loss. And um, this class is a, a chance to talk openly about how you feel, discover commonalities with each other, and gain support from each other. So at this time, since I don't know all of you, I would like to take a moment and say your name and something you like to do. My name is Ms. Rogers, and I like to work out. First thing we're going to cover is confidentiality. Super important, especially for this class. Um, it is number one. This class covers some really hard things, and we need to be able to keep each other's privacy in order to support them and help them. Um, Outside of this class, we are not to use other people's names, use their information, or tell anything to anybody of what they said. You may tell someone else what you said, but please, please, please do not share anybody's information or their stories. Pretty much what happens in here stays in here, and that's the way we can continue this and go on. Um, so, up on the board, it's kind of like tic-tac-toe. I want, we're going to take a moment and individually you're going to come up and put your name next to three or four things on here that apply to you. Um, say you like a, say you like dogs or if you have one at home, go ahead and put your name by it. Maybe you like to play the Xbox, put your name by it. Maybe you like basketball or are on the basketball team. Go ahead. Um, we'll take a few minutes and let everybody come up here and just put your name by it and then we'll go over. to have those people, that support group, that you might have something in common with or share the same experience in order to open up and, and share your feelings and express those to them. That's a big goal of this group, is to be able to feel comfortable and confident, to trust us and to express your feelings so that maybe you can find ways to cope with your grief. Who can tell me, oh, um, I do want to read a quote. If you live close enough to the world around you, you might find someone like you, someone trying to find their way, someone trying to find their self. Sometimes it seems like you are the only one in the world who's struggling, who's frustrated, unsatisfied, barely getting by. But that feeling's alive, and if you just hold on, just find the courage to face it all for another day. Someone or something will find you and make it all okay. Because we all need a little help sometimes, we need someone to remind us that it won't always be this way, that someone is out there and that someone will find you. We can be that someone for each other. We can help each other through this. We can support them, make it easier to express our feelings of our losses and, and help 
focus them and breathe and, and come together. Who can tell me what the definition of loss is? Or, you know, take a best shot. Okay. Losing someone or something you love or fairly deeply about. It can be very painful. You may experience all kinds of different emotions, and it may feel like the pain and sadness you're experiencing will never give up. These are normal reactions to significant loss. But while there is no right or wrong way to grieve, there are healthy ways to cope with the pain that in time can renew you and permit you to move on. Who can tell me what the definition of grief is? It is a natural response to loss. It's the emotional suffering you feel when something or someone you love is taken away. The more significant loss, the more intense the grief will be. You may associate grief with the death of a loved one, which is often the cause of most intense type of grief, but any loss can cause grief. For example, loss of a pet, loss of health, say someone in your family was diagnosed with cancer, or really, really sick, or maybe they lost a limb or something. Um, maybe you lost a friend. Maybe you had to move away and had to move out of the house that you grew up in. Maybe you had to move to a new school, or a parent lost a job. Maybe you yourself lost some money. All these type of losses can cause grief. Grieving is a personal and highly individual experience. How you grieve depends on many factors, including your personality and coping style, your life experience, your faith and religion, and what you actually lost. The grieving process takes time. Healing happens gradually. It, can be, it can't be forced or hurried. There is no normal time limit for grieving. You can take as long as you need. Some get over in days, some weeks, some months, some years. It takes a long time sometimes, but that's up to you and how you choose to cope with it and get over it. So at this time, now that we've gone over what loss and grief is who here has experienced loss? Who would like to share an experience of their loss? Any brave stories? I have an experience. One of the handouts I gave you is a poem that I actually wrote. I lost my mother 11 years ago, and I wrote this during a really hard time in my life when I was grieving. Um, who can help me read this? This is a few volunteers. Okay. Each person can take a, a section of it and we'll just go around the, the room. What is this place? What is this place? It is full of color, yet icy black. So much music, but I hear none. Once full of love and passion, now I lack. The feelings of excitement only leave me numb. I need peace, I need faith. I need to depart from this dark place. This is not me, not who I am. I will get out, I know I can. I will be positive and strong, in hopes that escaping won't take long. I am independent and I strive on my own. I don't often accept a hand to hold. Life is full of obstacles and detours, but only the driver can determine their course. There isn't a map and signs are unclear. Once a turn is made, it is hard to not fear. My headlights are dim. I don't know where I'm going. I'm so frustrated and exhausted from not knowing. I wish I had answers confirmation and peace. 
I wish the bad thoughts and burdens would release. How can I make it back to music and colors? How can I feel the touch and hear the laughter of others? I yearn for the peace and happiness I once had. Oh, the optimist in me, please come back. So, who can, who can tell me what they thought I was feeling at this time? Yes, I was feeling much grief, much sadness, much confusion. I didn't actually know how to cope with this. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to do. Um, and then I was able to find a support just my friends around me. I was able to trust others and open up and, and find ways that would make me happy, that would make me healthy and help me be a positive example towards other people. I wanted to help them because I knew that I could overcome it. So within grief and loss, there are stages that we experience, most of us. Um, the other handout that I gave you, it's called Stages of Grief. And let's start here, and we'll, we'll go over the first one, and then we'll move on. Shock example. I'm numb. I do not feel anything. Who here has felt that way before? Panic. I cannot stand this. Crying all the time. You get that crazy feeling in you like it's like you don't know what to do. You don't know where to go. It's just, you know, what happened? What do I do? Denial. I will be all right. I'm okay. Sometimes it's easy just to shove it on the rug, right? And just pretend it didn't ever happen. And no one needs to know about it. No one needs to know that you're hurting inside. It's fine. Right? I'm fine. Just leave me alone. Guilt. If I had done something else, or it's my fault. I wish I had not said that. How many times do we have something happen where we wish we could change what happened? What we wish we could change what we did just five minutes prior to it happening? Or, like, I, there's often times where you want to just re press the reverse button and do it all over again. It's kind of it. You just feel guilty, like you could have done something better. Anger. I'm so mad. This isn't fair. Those other stages will lead to this, right? You just get frustrated. You get angry. You just want things to change so much. You wish it could all go back to normal. Or you want that lost thing back so much it just makes you mad. Depression. I'm so alone. I just cannot go on. How many, is, how many people have felt that way? Just gets to be so heavy, so tiring, so dark. They just feel like there's nothing else you can do. And then comes hope. Hope is that light at the, the very end of depression where you can see that there's change in the future, that you can do something about it. Whatever has happened, whatever you lost, there's that little glimpse of life that lets you know that you're getting through, that even though that is gone, you can still be a better person. You can still overcome it. You can still be an example to others. You can still find happiness in you even though what happened has happened. Then comes acceptance. I still have some bad days, but I can make it. It has been rough, but I've learned a lot about myself. I 
actual one can testify that. Um, it's hard. It's hard to lose something or someone that you love. It's it was part of you, whether it be money or a job or your house or a loved one. It becomes part of you to to an extent. It, it it has a place in your heart, and so it's it's really hard to let go of that. It's really hard to get used to life without it. Um, but then. You learn to cope. You learn to find that happiness and accept that it has happened and move on and become full again. At the bottom, there's a quote by Wayne, Wayne Hall. I must accept that which I find unacceptable. I must rebuild that which I didn't destroy. I must restructure my life, my dreams, my hopes, my future. I must, even though it is not a We often need to choose our loss, but it causes grief, and so we can choose how to cope with that grief. That said, the last handout I gave you, it's called Taking Care of You. Again, I'm going to ask for your help to read this. Let's go around this way this time. Number one, eat a balanced diet. Exercise and get enough sleep. Most important, nutrition is a must to feel better, to have daily actions and energy and, and just go on. Number two, surround yourself with people you know who will be kind and nurturing very important. I mean, it's that support group. It's what we're here for. Someone who's, who has, shares the same experience or someone who can have empathy and put themselves in your shoes. Someone who can show you they love you and care for you. Three, stay away from harmful substances. It's often a go-to for people when they lose something or get depressed or get tired and, and angry, they lean on these things as a crutch. But it's not going to help. It's, it may help for a short time, may make you feel better for a short time, but eventually it gets you and it adds up. It doesn't make the, the situation go away. Four, let others know how you feel. That's why we're here, right? to express ourselves. Give, let, those, let those things that are weighing you down out so we can help cope. Each of us can help one another find these skills and which ones will work the best. Five, get involved in a fun activity with others. Yeah, be active. Have fun. Don't, don't let yourself stray away from those daily things that you love to do. Do these things. It, it helps. Six. Give yourself some time to relax. Relaxing is needed. Not just sleep again, but, you know, read a book or just relax. Enjoy nature. Hop in your hammock and Take some time. Reflect. Seven. Allow time each day to be alone, to be quiet, and to reflect. I kind of jumped again there. Um, that is, and that's important. I mean, reflect on how you're feeling and how how do you plan on on overcoming your grief and and taking care of yourself. I kind of jumped again again. Take time to nurture yourself. Nurture, as in care. Care for yourself. Do what you need to do to care for yourself. Nine. Keep a journal. I know a lot of you might not have time or might not think it's important or have never tried it. I 
advice and encourage you maybe to try it. It might help. Write your thoughts down on paper. I myself have an example. I keep a journal, and when I do, I write to my mom. At the very top, dear mom, this is how my day is going. This is what I've done. It makes me feel better. Number 10, listen to great music. I don't know one person that doesn't like music. No matter what kind it may be. I'm not limiting anybody to any kind of music. Whatever makes you feel good. Whatever gives you that burst of energy. Whatever helps you get through your day. Good music is so helpful. At the bottom, it says, my plans for taking care of myself include. I would like you, it doesn't have to be any of these things written down. But I encourage you to write down at least one thing that you can commit to that will help you take care of yourself, that will help you cope with your grief. And after you're done with that, you can bring the, just hand them to the front, and we can have them for next time and maybe check up on you, see how things are going, see if you've committed to that, see if you followed through. And then, then we can see if it helps, see if you found some kind of coping skill that, that takes you one step further from that grief to that happiness. Thank you. Have a great day.